Hello, this is John from More Jeepney, and we are bringing to you another Bushido battle report. I have here my Ito against Irwin's Ronin clan, which is actually prefecture, and we will be playing very important messenger. My deployment zone will be here, and we have over the terrain, and his zone will be here. I have to get my VIP guy over at that zone. He has to get his VIP guy over here at this zone. And here we have the players. Okay, I have Chiyo, Sakura, I have Ito Ayako and Jade Mamba Guard, all girls, versus his all girls, which are the three Imperial sisters accompanied by the Grey Pilgrim. This is 66 rice points. And to round mine out to uh, 66 points, I have a special event card preordain and Ito Clan armor and the Jade Mamba Guard will be wearing the Ito Clan armor. So for the preordain, I will roll my two dice now and see what happens. I have a four and a five as my reserve dice. All right, we'll get on to deployment. Okay, we have deployed and I already have placed my two virtue tokens. I'm playing the Blessed Team Force, by the way. So uh, my chassis start with double their key. And I have virtue tokens. And over here at the opponent's side, the sisters and the Grey Pilgrim are already deployed. And we will start with our initiative. So let's roll for our initiative. I have a two. He has a three, so he'll determine who goes first. Okay, for the, for the first few activations, everyone just move into position. No one did a double activation yet, so uh, Sakura ran there, Chiyo ran there, Jade Mamba ran there, uh, Ayako just walked, and the whole Ronin side just walked out of their deployment zone. Okay, so for my activation, I'll move Ayako up here. I will use her channel ability and give one key to the Jade Mom Guard and she will cast, well rather cast, use a feat, Hypnotic Gaze, range 12 to the sister with the spear there, she, and we'll be rolling uh, on a post key test. Uh, I have my three dice versus his two key and if I'm successful, uh, the target loses an activation counter. So. I have a 6 and I have a 7 here. And he only has a 5, 4, plus the supporting dice of 1. So this figure loses a uh, counter. So Erwin moves the uh, bow sister forward and tries to shoot uh, Ito Ayako with a range attack. He will need an 8 to hit. He is at long range, so 3. I'm behind the cover. Uh, long range meaning he needs a 6, I'm behind cover 7, and he moved causing another penalty so he'll need an 8 on 3 dice. 8 on 3 dice, let's see what happens. 6, 7, and 8, yes. Primary 6, supporting dice 7 and 8, deals 0 damage, oh wait, brutal. So he's, he actually has 1 up now. So 1 damage, plus the 2d6, that is an 8. Bow plus one nine and deals a total of two damage to Aya. So it's now my turn and I actually forgot that the bodyguard could have switched positions and taken that arrow instead, but anyway it is done. So for now I'm just going to make her run towards there. So she is running again, 7.5, and that will get her around here. And she's exhausted with the run token. Okay, for his activation, he is moving the Grey Pilgrim up. And she is now exhausted. That is just a walk action. So I'll just move the Jade Mamba Guard forward 5. So getting me to about there. And we are now exhausted. So Erwin simply moves EG up and for my activation I will run Chia again somewhere around there. So Chia ran forward here and that's the end of turn 1. 
And for turn two initiative, forest to one, I go first. So for my activation, I'm going to try to hit uh, her again with hypnotic gaze. My three key is to his two, so let's roll. I have a six and a seven. He's got double one, so remove a token, please. And she is considered uh, stunned now. So the bo the bow girl spends an activation token to reload her bow, and it's now back to my turn again. And I will do the same thing. I will spend the token, and this time I will try to hit her with hypnotic gaze. Should be her or her, uh, maybe, yeah, her instead. Hypnotic gaze on the bow girl. So my three dice. Let's see what happens. Uh-oh, four, five. He only has a three. He's got a one here. So yeah, remove her last token, please. And she is also stunned. Okay, so Erwin is now going to use the Grey Pilgrim to cast a... Uh, or to use a ranged attack called Call Lightning, which is a lightning strike against uh, my Jade Mamba Gun, Jade Mamba Guard here, and he will use uh, what's I call it, Raijin's Rage, uh, which is a two key ability which will chain the lightning to hit Chi over here. So you will need a five to hit Erwin, yes. five to hit the Jade Mamba Guard. Go ahead, make your roll, please. Five and a six. So you are up one plus your 2d6 modifier. That is an eight uh, plus one for the call lighting a nine, but I have armor three, which drops it down to six. So just one damage on the Jade Mamba guard. So one damage. And the chain attack here will be hitting at uh, medium range also. So he will need a five again on three dice. Whether in five on three dice. Five, a six, uh, one damage again, plus your 2d6 modifier, which is a plus three. So he, uh, Chiyo here gets a total of four damage. Ouch. Okay, for my activation, I will use my uh, Jade Mamba Guard. Spend a token, I'll simply make a walk action to engage the Grey Pilgrim. And try to strike her. I will spend two key to increase my dice pool and he doesn't have enough key to really do anything so he's at three dice pool and we will now uh, allot our time. The Grey Pilgrim has uh, uh, lightning reflexes in reach so she will surely strike first. And this is how I have allotted my dice. Let's hope it... Uh, and here is my roll. I have a attack of two and defense here, also two dice. So he's striking first. He allotted one to attack, that's to my defense. So he misses. Then for my counter attack, I have a six, he has a five. So I actually have one in. One in. Plus my 2d6 is only a seven. So, does he have any special? No, Dachi only adds plus one, eight, so just one damage to uh, the Grey Pilgrim over there. With that uh, melee exchange, uh, the Grey Pilgrim is now exhausted and uh, I had to spend a token for that. I still have two virtue tokens that I did not spend. So for his activation, he is going to use the sister ability. What do you, what do you call that ability? Uh, that gives... Yeah, she, uh, she spends her key, loses a token, but gives a token to the uh, bow sister over there so that he'll probably make a range attack uh, next turn. For my activation, I will, uh, I'm not sure if I can get within five there, so I'll spend two, two tokens and try to charge the Grey Pilgrim over here. So I have a charge of 10, so that will surely reach, getting me right there. The Grey Pilgrim is ganged up and exhausted, dropping her down to one dice. And I will allot my dice this way, one on defense to one attack. And what is yours? One on defense. So let's see what happens. I have an, uh, he has no attack. 
So this one is out. He has a defense of four. I have an attack of five, so I am up one. Plus my 2d6 plus the charge. Five plus the charge bonus six, seven. So uh, no bonus damage, but I still deal that one damage over there. And it is now Erwin's turn, and what is he doing? He is going to in turn gang up Chiyo and perform a melee strike. Okay, so I am now forced to turn and face my new assailant. Uh, so I am I right now have three for my dice pool. I am ganged up, so drop to two, and I'm exhausted, so I only have one dice. But what I will do is I will spend a virtue token to make me strike first. So remember, uh, Erwin, I am striking first with this dice and I'm striking first with this special ability. Okay, and uh, Erwin has uh, spent two key, three key to increase his dice pool to four. Okay, so we reveal now our dice. And I did a sidestep defense and one defense dice. Two is the two for him, so go ahead. Uh, let's make our rolls. Damn it, I roll a one. And he rolls a uh, seven for his attack. Which pretty much kills me. Even if he rolls a double one for uh, his damage modifier. Uh, Chiyo is down to one and Chiyo is killed. So for my turn, I will simply move her uh, five inches around and that will get me around this area right there. So she goes there. So Yan Jing, I believe, the one with the bow, can now see Sakura over here and per will perform a range attack and you will need a six to hit on three dice. So let's see. Six, seven, so you deal one damage. Bow is brutal one, so you're now success two. We're now at two damage, plus two plus eight, but the bow is also plus one nine. Total of three damage to Sakura. So Sakura over here gets three damage. From my activation, I will use a token. I will move five inches and try to poison her, hit her with a Venom attack. My Venom attack, and it is an opposed key test. So uh, I have a key of two, but Psychic Venom gives me plus one. So here we go. I am three plus one, four, and he has a six there, so uh, he wins the opposed key, so I don't get to uh, poison she over there. So Erwin is now moving in uh, Yiji, ganging up on my Jade Mama Guard to perform a melee attack. So I'll spend a Virtue Token to make me strike first. Uh, this is how I have allo allocated my attack dice. However, uh, Erwin has allocated it that way and has declared combo attack. But I strike first. So I just have a 5 and a 1. So I strike first, defense of uh, 3, okay, so that allows me to have an up of 2 plus 2d6, which is a mere 5, which is a minus 1, but my sword uh, gives me plus 1, so 0, so I deal 2 damage to uh, EG over there. And I have a defense of zero, and he has attack of three, so he deals uh, three base damage. But you know what? I'm going to use my preordain and just scrap this whole thing to increase my defense to five. So okay, it's considered a miss. And given that melee exchange, my token is removed, and no one has tokens left, and that's the end of Third round three initiative. I have a 3, he has a 5, he goes first. So here's what happens. Uh, still has a reload marker and both my virtue tokens go to 
Sakura. However, he won the initiative, so let's see what he will do first. For his first, uh, Irwin will activate the Grey Pilgrim and uh, gang up on my Jade Mamba Guard there. I'm not declaring anything. Uh, it's useless to spend the token to give me Lightning Reflexes. She is still faster, higher initiative. She will strike first, and I only have two dice to defend myself. But let's see if I get lucky. I've allotted my dice this way. Let's hope that this works and that punches through. And let's see what happens. I have a three and a two, and he rolls a seven. So he is four damage in plus two d six. That is a ten. Ten is plus one. So how many in do you have again? Four in. Plus one, but wait, 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 I have armor three. Okay, so let us recompute that and uh, come back to you and see what happens. Okay, so after going over our map here, uh, as it happens, the final damage is four. Jade Mamba Guard has uh, only five life. He's got one damage, so that kills the Jade Mamba Guard. Okay, so what I will do now is I will make her walk towards the objective zone. Since I'm passing through the road, I'll have plus two inches. So I'll have a total move of seven. Six is here. Seven will put me here. So I'm right there at the objective zone. And roll two dice to try to put poison over to the spear girl over there. So two dice. I have a total of five. A post key test. Two two dice, two dice. Yeah. And I don't cause any poison. However, I got her into the zone, so I earn one point for that. With that declared, she is my uh, messenger for this game. So Erwin is moving uh, she over there to take out my uh, uh, Shasai Sakura. So we'll have to face. Whoops. I hope that means that I am to win this fight. I'll spend a uh, virtue token to give me lightning strike. So I will uh, be striking first. And that's now a lot our dice. So I am striking first with my lightning reflexes and this is how I have a lot of my dice. Risky. And we go make our roll. Let's see what he did. Oops. I scored an attack of seven. He has only a defense of one. I strike first, so I deal base damage of seven plus two d6. Oh wait, let's check. Oh, tanto minus one. So base damage seven, but I have a minus one on this roll. Uh, becomes a five minus one, but I still deal six damage to her. And I think uh, I won, so she is killed. She's dead. And it's now my turn. I'm going to activate Ayako and try to take a token away so that she won't be able to spend two tokens and try to charge that way. So let's see what happens. Okay, so it is an opposed key test. I roll with my three dice. Six, seven, eight. Six, seven, I win. Please remove a uh, token and that character is now stunned. And Erwin, what are you doing? Reloading. She is reloading and she's probably gonna try to hit her with the bow. So he's reloaded uh, for my uh, activation. I only have one key left. I'll use that one key to try to psychic drain uh, Yiji, which in turn will give uh, transfer some of her key to me. So that's an opposed key test. I have three dice for my key and I have a six. There's a single six there. He has a two and another two, so supporting dice that makes it a three. So all the key there becomes mine. Thank you very much. I have no more activations, so it's all them now. Okay, so uh, he's turning and he's going to make a range attack for two hit, but he moved to make that turn, so on fives, and he bought a load of dice with his key 
Five to hit. And that is surely an eight. So uh, I think even if he rolls a double one, that's an uh, that's an eight. Uh, he has uh, three damage, base damage now. He's brutal one. He's dealing four damage plus modifier. The only way he will not kill my figures if he rolls double ones. And he doesn't roll a double one, so my VIP is killed. And uh, since did I kill your VIP in any way? Uh, my VIP is the Grey Pilgrim. VIP was the Grey Pilgrim. Grey Pilgrim was the VIP, so uh, his VIP is still alive. He killed mine first, so he wins this game. <laughs>